Can you also talk about any lines, you know, uh, data services and on-demand provisioning of dedicated data services instances? Yes. So in the past few years, uh, building application platforms usually keep, keep, uh, kept people uh, pretty busy. So if an organization uh, going down the path of digitalization uh, decided to pick up an application development platform, they often take uh, several months, sometimes even several years to adapt uh, their internal development structure uh, and methodology to really you know, benefit from the reduced friction that, for example, a Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes uh, offers. Now, over time, there's um, another effect kicking in, which is that applications, they do not live in a vacuum. And most applications aren't stateless. So somewhere, you need to store state. And um, while modern database vendors also try to become more cloud native, they uh, often carry a legacy of um, you know, having a database that's not really made to be operated. Postgres is a wonderful example. It's a wonderful database, and uh, under the or within the open source community, uh, maybe the the, the feature richest um, relational database at least there is. But at the same time, making these databases work within an application platform is quite challenging. And it's even quite challenging if you keep onboarding those data services with their commercial products, because this, those vendors also have the problem on how to make these things work in the cloud. And if you're buying, let's say, 10 different data services from 10 different vendors, even if they are cloud-enabled somehow, you have and introduce a lot of heterogeneity into your platform. Now, as we started developing our own platform that was publicly facing since 2013, we've learned that this is no option because you will be drowning in operational effort. So we have been looking for a solution that actually works across data services and provides both the application developer as well as platform operator with a homogenous uh, API to do lifecycle of both. The automation, the platform operator, as well as service instances for the application developers. And this is how the n Lines data services came to life. As part of the journey, we thought about, is there a single paradigm on how automation should be done that covers everything from small instances for development and testing purposes to large production-grade systems? And the answer to that is yes, there is. It's the on-demand provisioning of dedicated service instances, which means that whenever an application developer uh, requests the creation of a, of a database, this database will be provisioned on demand, whether it is as a pod or a set of pods, such as within a stateful set in Kubernetes, or whether it is a set of virtual machines using Bosch. The service instance can comprise of a single pod, a single VM, or a cluster of pod or a cluster of virtual machines that will come together and work, for example, as a Postgres streaming cluster with asynchronous streaming replication. And similar for all the other data services, the user interface of all these data services, whether it's RabbitMQ, whether it's Postgres, whether it's MongoDB, or whether it's Elasticsearch, should be pretty similar. So creating a backup for Postgres should work similar for creating a backup, let's say, for Redis. And this is basically what the automation is about. And the underlying major paradigm here is the on-demand provisioning of dedicated instances, because you can create small single instances and large uh, clusters with the same technical implementation. And the fact that they are dedicated means that you have a clear contract to the application developer. So let's say you're ordering a three-node uh, Postgres cluster with uh, 16 gigabyte of memory each. This instance with its three nodes will be for you exclusively. If you, for example, take an application and max out this service instance, this will be your problem, uh, will be your problem alone. It won't affect uh, other neighbors through uh, the uh, solid isolation of virtual machines or in a, in a little, well, let's say decreased manner, the isolated environment provided by pods and containers. 
What kind of use cases are you looking at with dedicated data service instances? Well, if you if you happen to be an organization that has many uh, developers, you want to reduce not only the friction to get an application up and running, but also to get the data services up and running. They, I mean, if you have an application and it requires a database, then you need to get up the database up and running as well as the application. And the goal of all application developer platforms is to provide a tool set to the application developer that they'll push a button and can perform a cold deploy in the middle of the night if they have a wonderful idea or happen to be um, awake. And they don't, they shouldn't have to wait for any sysop or anything to do any manual labor. So whenever you happen to create um, or have to create a larger number of uh, data service instances and you don't have or don't want to um, make your DBAs uh, do that on demand, you use an automated solution like the N9 data services to do the heavy lifting for you. We have clients who uh, operate thousands of data services across you know, the many data services we offer in those Cloud Foundry environments and manage their life cycle, life cycle using that automation with ease. So it's about uh, operational and engineering efficiency in the end. 